Good day, everybody. Meteorologist Mark Muller here. How's everybody coming off the weekend here? Take a look at this. We've got Hurricane Estelle, a big old storm in the eastern Pacific. What's going on with the Atlantic? It's really quiet. But guess what? I think things are about to change in the next couple weeks. And as always, we got strong to severe thunderstorms, isolated tornado potential in parts of the northeast for your Monday and beyond. We'll take a look at all the severe weather and the major heat wave developing in the central states. Let's get into it. All right, take a look at the infrared satellite photo I'm briefly showing you here. This is a stell looking more impressive on satellite photo. There is a little bit of a hole here in the northern side of the system you can see, but that should slowly fill in, I believe, as we go into Monday. Look at up towards Puerto Vallarta here, off right on the Mexican coastline here. You see some of these white areas? Those are lightning strikes, and you can see there has been a lot of lightning up towards Puerto Vallarta here, a lot of rainfall as well. As this system moves towards the northwest, Thankfully, a lot of this moisture will be coming a little bit to an end here. As you take a look here, the rest of the Caribbean, we don't have much to talk about in here. And look at the Gulf of Mexico. Clear is mostly a bell here, but look at this. We do have an area of showers and thunderstorms coming off the Louisiana coastline. This big old mess right here off the coast of Florida, it is interesting feature, but no chance of development here. All right, so as we take a look, here's the coast of Africa. There's that big old tropical wave. I wanted to show you all this dust. It is slowly lifting to the north, you know, so we have, you know, this drier air, this more stable air that's heading more towards, you know, the northwest here. So in time, I do believe this dust will eventually get out of the way over the next week or two, and we will be allowed to get some of these tropical waves developing into some potentially named storms. All right, so let's take a look here. 5 a.m. Monday morning. So this is what we're dealing with. The HWRF model showing some of these showers and thunderstorms still pelting up here towards Puerto Vallarta. So with the monsoon combined with moisture from Estelle, definitely going to continue to remain on the east side of the system. And you know what that means, shower and thunderstorm activity. But take a look at this. Take a look at this system. It's really wound up. It's getting a well-defined eye by this point. Um, and as we head throughout time here, let's take a look at this. This is 8 a.m. And then we head through 5 p.m. Monday. So this is where I think it could be nearing strong Category 2 and potentially Category 3. So let's see how it lines up with the track here, the National Hurricane Center track. So as we head throughout time here, I think this thing will jaunt a little bit farther just to the south ever so slightly as it continues. And as the system, if were to weaken just slightly, it were to remain on the southern envelope of this track. So you can see that is happening um, as the system continues to slowly weaken as it heads out over cooler waters, more stable conditions. So take a look at this time, encountering a little bit of wind shear by this point too. Um, this is uh, Thursday, 2 a.m. Take a look at that. So, you know, we head in time here. This thing really heading out towards a shipping problem at this point. All right, so heading into the Atlantic, high pressure. This is slowly going to retreat over the next couple weeks, and I'll show you here as we head into the slides here. Take a look at this. So, yeah, we're dealing with this wave here off the coast of Africa, but at this point, high pressure is really exerting itself here to the south, so it's going to keep everything moving more on a track towards this direction across the Caribbean. But, you know, it's in time here, yeah, we still have a lot of activity here in the eastern Pacific. But you start to see the intertropical convergence zone it, by this point on Monday, July 25th. It's starting to lift here to the north a bit. And you can see high pressures retreating to the north. That should allow things to head more towards a direction a little bit further to the north, especially along and north of the Caribbean islands here. And you can see, you know, as we head in time here, nothing really catches the eye here. We Still have some flare-ups here into parts of the Caribbean, but we'll watch it here. And look at that. There is a little feature. This is a bit far out Tuesday, August 2nd, but there's a feature here in the north-central Gulf of Mexico. All right, so the eastern Pacific here, here is the GFS momentarily. We see Estelle moving away. You can actually see all that moisture still here with the monsoon up along the west coast of Mexico. Still can't get rid of that, even though Estelle, by this point in Tuesday, is heading well over the open waters of the Pacific. Now... You notice there is a little bit of clearing here back towards the eastern Pacific. We might get a little bit of a break here initially before we start to have some more flare-ups. Now, this is further to the south. This is towards Friday, July 22nd. You can see at this point, we essentially have Estelle way out here over the eastern Pacific heading towards the northwest. So as we continue on to this system into the weekend, we have our next potential system down here in the eastern Pacific, another potential here, and we have another wave here in 
towards South America. So let's put this into motion. That system seems to stay offshore. This is Monday, uh, July 25th, so still feeding moisture up here into parts of Acapulco and Puerto Vallarta. You definitely want to keep an eye on that. But as we continue in time, look what's forming behind it here. So we have an that's interesting. We have another system to the west. There's that uh, secondary system behind Estelle, and look at that. We head in through time here. There it is. It's remaining a little bit weak, but feeding moisture up along the west coast of Mexico by Friday, July 29th here. All right, so we're taking it from the top here. This is 8 a.m. Monday morning. We're just have some showers and thunderstorms here across parts of the northeast, but the key is is going to be as we move throughout the morning hours, you see how you have this clearing. So you have showers and thunderstorms up here in western Pennsylvania, up here in upstate New York. But look at down here. This is where you have a clearing across eastern Pennsylvania, Maryland, parts of the Catskills, lower Hudson Valley here into New Jersey. If this can remain clear, this is going to destabilize the atmosphere as we head throughout the day. And you start to see here... You get showers and thunderstorms. Some of these could become strong to severe here, starting to develop. This is by 2 p.m. here, so you see that. Um, but I think the biggest threat here is going to come in as the afternoon progresses. You see some of these even up into parts of western New England, the Hudson Valley, the first batch, showers and storms. And Now look, watch what happens here. See, things really start to clear out here across eastern Pennsylvania, even up to Binghamton here. So we'll have to watch some of these areas uh, for potential development. This is 3 p.m. So as we continue throughout the day, look what starts to form here just south, right along south of Harrisburg here. Strong thunderstorms. We have that first batch moving northeast into New England here. So as we continue in time, look what starts to solidify here. So you start to have right around Wilkes-Barre, Scranton, down towards east of Harrisburg, towards Baltimore, Washington, D.C. You start to have this explosive development. Now, the this... Thunderstorm action up here in the northern New York, northern New England. This should be mostly not severe at this point. Uh, we might have some of these cells over here in New England get severe as well. But, you know, as we head in time here, this is 6 p.m. Look what we got going on here. It's pretty clear up in the Binghamton area, but look at just south of you here. This is 6 p.m. This is quite a thunderstorm line, and I think this is where we could potentially have the greatest risk of, risk of those isolated tornadoes. So as we head through in time here, take a look at this. We head to 7 p.m., so they're starting to lose their punch just slightly, but still, there's a threat here. Southern Catskills, almost to the lower Hudson Valley, into parts of western New Jersey, the eastern Poconos here. So watch out for this as we continue to go throughout the evening. And you see you kind of get a little bit of a regeneration here into parts of New Jersey and the Hudson Valley. Some of these could be pretty damaging uh, with damaging wind, large hail, frequent lightning. And you see how that progresses into western New England and southern New Jersey by about the time 10 p.m. And we continue here, take a look at this in time. We finally start to clear things out here. This is Tuesday, 7 a.m., so take a look at that. Let's just zoom out just slightly here. So, yeah, this is going to be, you know, a Monday thing. And for the most part on Tuesday, you might have some of these stray showers and thunderstorms try to develop, you know, in these areas, but it's not going to be an all-day event. All right, so let's see what's going to promote this type of stormy pattern. You see this big old ridge here in the central states. All of this energy has to ride around it. We do have, watch how this lines up throughout the week. We head into Tuesday. Notice something here. Yeah, we got a bigger system here riding into the northern plains for your Tuesday. But you notice how this pattern, you get into the, get this ring of fire here. And we're going to get successive runs of showers and thunderstorms. So we will have more energy move into parts of the Great Lakes, the northeast and northern plains by the weekend. All right, taking a look at the trouble area here across the Northeast for your Monday. So, yeah, it is a marginal risk, but I do think the area that is most concerned is especially eastern Pennsylvania, parts of New Jersey, the lower Hudson Valley, the Catskills, Poconos re region. This is where we could see, especially after 2, 3 p.m. here, especially towards 4, 5, 6 p.m., we could see those thunderstorms that could rotate. They will be isolated in nature, but some of these could produce an isolated tornado. And as you can see, take a look. There it is, the threat of it. It's mainly up into parts here of eastern Pennsylvania, uh, northwest New Jersey, into parts of the Hudson Valley. So we're going to have to watch out for that for your Monday. So for your Tuesday, this 
threat shifts here to the northern Midwest here, the most of the state of Wisconsin, eastern Minnesota, uh, parts of extreme western Michigan here. So we'll have the damaging wind, large hail, isolated tornado threat for you as well for your Tuesday. All right, take a look at the heat wave here. This is just a dangerous heat wave. We're well into the mid to upper 100s in the parts of uh, South Dakota here. Look at this, northern Texas into Oklahoma. We do have a cooler area with that uh, clouds and precipitation. That's the only saving grace here in the Ohio Valley and parts of the Northeast. But as we head towards your Tuesday, look at this. This gets downright dangerous here. We're going to get into the mid to high 100s here. Look at that, 112 right there north of Dallas-Fort Worth. This is crazy weather here. And as we take a look in time, look at this. It's just this heat just reinforces itself across the south central plains. And you even start to get 90s up here in the parts of the northeast. So the only area you see 70s and 80s is up here in the, the UP of Michigan, up in the parts of northern Wisconsin and parts of northern uh, Minnesota here. So yeah, things are really just not looking that great as far as like comfortable temperatures in most areas. Look at this. This just keeps building throughout the week. This is Wednesday, uh, July 20th here. So you're starting to get... Look at this into the northeast, 97, 94, 94 in New York City. So yeah, the heat is on in most areas. This is crazy. The air conditioners are going to be running. The power grids are going to be strained. Look at this, 100 degree temperatures in this large area. And of course, this is normal out in the desert southwest. We get a little bit of a cool shot here into the northeast, if you can call that much of a cool shot. You know, mid to upper 80s, but it's cooler than the rest of the nation. And we just continue to swelter here in the south central plains uh, towards your weekend. We get into Saturday and look at this. It actually starts to get even hotter again here in the parts of the south central plains. Extended Outlook, hometown viewers, Upper Susquehanna River Valley, Binghamton to Scranton. Take a look Monday through Friday here. Yeah, we're looking at some possible strong to severe thunderstorms, particularly towards Scranton. I think there'll still be a chance towards Binghamton, but definitely during the afternoon hours towards 4, 5, 6 p.m. onward. Definitely a chance of damaging wind, large hail, isolated tornado threat possible. Heading up towards the upper 70s, near 80 in Wilkes-Barre. So we get to Tuesday. We clear it out just a little bit. There will be a chance of a residual shower or thunderstorm. Heading up towards 90 as well. Look at that. Hot as a firecracker on Wednesday. Heading well into the low 90s. And then Thursday we have a chance of showers and thunderstorms. Friday remaining warm and toasty, 87. Thank you for joining me for this edition of Weather Eastern. Don't forget, question or comment down below. Let's keep the weather conversation going. Smash that like button, subscribe, hit the bell button if you haven't already. And Facebook, Media Mark, also Weather Northeastern. Also Twitter at Weather Eastern. MediaMark.com, WeatherNorthEastern.com.